So hello everyone again. Like uh, uh, then we have our uh, last talk for this session. Uh, I would like to introduce you uh, a team of researchers from University of Leeds. Uh, it will be Robin, Greta, and Jem, and they will talk about uh, OSM for sustainable transportation planning and uh, about their very interesting projects. So the floor is yours. Fantastic. Thanks for the intro. And our talk is, um, yeah, much more grounded and concrete than Null Island. That was a fascinating uh, talk, but hard to follow on from. So, yeah, I'm just going to go uh, straight into it. Um, in terms of structure, we're being chronological in a way. Um, we've all worked on this and we've worked as, uh, on this project as a team, but it's been kind of asynchronous. So this is the first opportunity for us to be together. And I think it's fair to say we've been working synchronously and um, it's been great to get all the feedback from the OSM community on what we're doing. Uh, one point of introduction is, that, is to say that for me personally, I got into OSM by first using it and being a data scientist and just pulling down all of this amazing data. And I felt so amazed and grateful that people had given me this amazing data to use to support my work that I kind of felt that I needed to contribute something back. This is, I think, our first state of the map for all of us. And I've made loads of edits and I've learned about editing. So um, that's been really good. And I think it is a two way process. It's not like companies or researchers are just using it. Um, there's, there's a real onboarding uh, mechanism to kind of feed back into the community. So that's um, one thing that I wanted to say by way of starting out, uh, and it is a great resource. And I think when you're using something free and you know that it's been generated by the community, thousands of hours have gone into generating OSM data, you kind of feel a sense of gratitude that I want to do something good with this. So um, that is a, an important part of our work. In terms of how this came about and going back to the story of us working asynchronously, um, very brief history of Open Infra. Um, I've developed tools that build on OpenStreetMap data to support a very specific thing, which is where to build cycleways. I'm looking to broaden that out to be uh, not just cycleways, so ha where do you put improved walking infrastructure and wheeling infrastructure, but uh, the limitation in what I was doing is that um, people who are actually building this stuff in the UK, who many of whom are using the propensity to cycle tool, which has um, been in production for about five years now and is basically the, the main strategic cycle network planning tool in the UK, uh, local authorities were coming to me saying, yeah, it's great that you can tell us where there's cycling potential, but we don't even know what's on the ground currently. And a bit of a kind of moment of truth for me was when a guy called Kit Allwinter, who's the active travel planning officer for West Yorkshire Combined Authority, um, he said, it's great, you can tell me how much cycling potential there is on this road, but I don't even know if the cycleway outside our headquarters is compliant with government regulations. So that shows the level of kind of lack of data about these vital um, pieces of infrastructure. And that was really set the seed of, we need to know more about the infrastructure. So that's how the Open Infra project began. And um, I'm gonna hand over to Greta, who uh, worked on it for, for six months. And then she like, I, I, I kind of set out this idea and then just like dumped it uh, on Greta's lap, who hadn't done much in terms of data science and stuff. And she ran with the baton and then she's handed the baton over to James. So in exactly the same way that the projects run, I'm going to use this as the metaphorical baton uh, and pass it to Greta. So I'm actually gonna skip this because I think it's fine to, among a scientifically literate audience to kind of accept that there are benefits of walking and cycling, like there's consensus on that. Um, and there's huge health benefits. So we are trying to tackle real world problems. And when we did the uh, workshop yesterday, we just said, oh, put your hands up if you've got new cycle infrastructure in your city. And basically 
this is a really common thing. So uh, we're doing it for the UK, but we hope to build tools and software that can work anywhere that enable more people to make use of OpenStreetMap data for evidence-based transport planning. So over to you, Greta. Thanks, Robin. Can I just join you here so I can move slides? Yes. Awesome. Yes, I'll just move, move on. So yeah, as Robin mentioned, when I joined him on this project, uh, I didn't know much about active travel or OSM specifically. So I started reading about what is needed. So what are the policies and how we can actually support policymakers with OSM data. And what I noticed, noticed is that we put a lot of emphasis on accessibility and making sure that everyone has access to our infrastructure. I was like, okay, that's something I need to explore in the context of OSM and how it can help us to, as Robin said, find out how compliant uh, our infrastructure, active travel infrastructure is with the requirements and recommendations. And what I really liked as well is that in all those documents such as inclusive mobility or LTN 20, is that they put a lot of emphasis on community engagement and consulting basically local citizens to meet their needs. And I think in this, in the, fa the fact that OSM relies so much on lo local knowledge when it comes to mapping, I think it can also become like a bridge between citizens and policymakers or researchers like us. So yeah, that's something I kept in mind. And obviously I started reading about OSM and I found out that uh, in the paper by Nelson et al that it can, it is almost predicted or she, they argue that it might become a kind of global source for inf on infrastructure data. So it's like, awesome, uh, let's move further, right? And I started reading about it in the context of completeness uh, and what is there in OSM data and uh, yeah, what does it say? What do researchers say about OSM data in terms of active travel, cycling, walking or wheeling? And I found this paper, I guess, Quite a few of you might be aware of it, that there is an argument that about 80% of roads are mapped in OSM, uh, but it comes with a caveat because it focuses on roads for motor traffic, so for cars basically. So it's not for cycling, it's not for walking, it's not about sidewalks, right? Uh, and recently, uh, obviously, there has been an increase of interest in this topic. And for example, there is a re quite recent paper from first-time colleagues who examined uh, or some uh, data or, or cycling infrastructure uh, derived from OSM data in the uh, in Canada in Canada, I believe. Uh, but yeah, again, it's on cycling, and they did not um, they did not really take into consideration accessibility, which is so important in the context of UK. Um, so yeah, that's a bit of a kind of additional context uh, to our project. And I'll just skip these two slides. Uh, yeah. Um, and I think what I want to mention is that uh, we've been talking about, we kind of been talking about this a little bit in uh, previous, in another conference. And um, what we found when we started examining OSM data in, and what it offers in terms of cycling infrastructure working uh, is that yeah, there is a kind of good general coverage, but when it comes to actually finding finding out what kind of infrastructure it is, the data becomes really limited. So it's quite hard to figure out. We might know, for example, that there is a cycleway, but is it like a lane or a track? It can, can get a bit kind of fuzzy. Uh, so yeah, and I'll just pass over to, to James to talk more about what we are doing, because obviously we want to dig deeper and make use of our SM data and make sure that it's useful for policymakers. Thank you very much, Greta. Um, yeah, so as Greta was just saying, and uh, Robin spoke at the beginning of the talk, um, we're trying to utilize the OpenStreetMaps data um, to be able to, uh, yeah, just um, be able to better inform, uh, so hopefully uh, to better inform policymakers and local planners uh, so that can use this uh, community, community data to, you know, just really target uh, infrastructure development in there. Uh, and this is where the Open Infra project really comes into its own and, and our, our main targeted output, which are transport infrastructure data packs. Um, so our, our, one of our main ga uh, goals is to create these um, with a suite of functions uh, from the Open Infra package. Uh, we aim to recategorize OpenStreetMaps data 
Uh, I'm sure you'll agree in, in default values, highway values, um, retrieving OpenStreetMaps data, it can be a little bit messy, a bit confusing, and, and quite daunting to people not exposed to it. So we're trying to just recategorize that and make it a little bit more useful for the uh, transport planners. Um, as you can see on the slide here, uh, I've been working on this project for about six months so far, and we've developed uh, several functions so far, um, mainly focused, uh, of course, on active travel infrastructure, so cycling, walking, we uh, wheeling, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, here are some of the functions we've developed so far. Um, but I'm just going to go through and give a couple visual examples uh, of what we're trying to achieve with our transport data packs. Uh, so, as I was just saying, here's a default um, output of OpenStreetMaps highway values. Um, this is around a five kilometer radius centered at Leeds City Centre, uh, just where we're from, the University of Leeds. Um, I'd like to think and hope we'd all agree that uh, this can be quite daunting and a little bit confusing if you're a transport planner. You're looking to try and improve infrastructure. It's not really the best uh, in the default output. Uh, so, one of our functions is uh, to recategorize road. Uh, road values to be uh, one of seven um, categories recognized by the UK Highways Agencies. Um, I'd like to think and hope you'd agree that this is a little bit more interpretable uh, to somebody who's never really used OpenStreetMaps before. Um, so it's, it's just being it's better, better visual output uh, for street planners and, you know, um, one, if one may wish to um, infer traffic volumes from these road descriptions um, and such, such information can be used in conjunction with our out, other outputs in terms of planning safe uh, cycle infrastructure or pedestrian infrastructure as well. Um, here we've got another output function which simply uh, selects OpenStreetMap infrastructure, uh, which will be appropriate for cyclists to travel on. Uh, this doesn't necessarily mean that it's um, friendly or super smooth. It just means that uh, cyclists should be able to go there um, and, and be able to travel safely. Obviously, most of the no values are sort of like high speed dual carriageways or the motorways. Uh, we have a similar output, but for walkable ways, uh, these two are very similar, obviously. Uh, in the UK, we have very nice um, uh, walking, uh, you know, rights, access rights and rights to roam. So you can go on pretty much any road infrastructure uh, apart from uh, motorways and dual carriageways. Um, here we have Recategorize max speed values. Um, I'm not sure if anybody's tried to look at max speed values with an open street maps before, but uh, some mappers will use a, a variety of tags, uh, say just 20 or five or 10. Um, what this does is it recategorizes speed values to uh, certain max speed values that are used by the UK highways agencies currently. Um, such information for this could be overlaid with uh, a previous plot, say, um, appropriate cycling infrastructure to find, you know, low speed local roads where it might be friendly to route cyclists if you don't want to go around, you know, high speed motor, uh, high speed traffic, etc. Uh, and additionally, here we have the presence of lighting um, on OSM ways. Uh, we have three distinct values. Yes, no, maybe. Uh, yes, no are quite self-explanatory. The maybe tag, um, rather than implying no lighting, just indicates that there is a lack of data from the uh, lit tag within OSM to distinguish uh, whether this is lit or not. Um, clearly, within a lot of um, urban built up areas, these maybe values will be yes. There's a lot of street lighting within cities. Um, however, you know, if you come from a more rural area, a small village where I originally came from, um, there's no street lighting within a three kilometer radius of my house. Um, but such information could be. Um, combined with the uh, appropriate cycling infrastructure and max speeds to say, create cycling infrastructure or identify potential cycling infrastructure that's appropriate to use after dark. Um, you know, it, we only have a couple of hours daylight in, well, quite a few, but our daylight's quite restricted in winter in England. And, you know, if you're working nine to five, sometimes it's dark to dark. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm hopefully we can see that all these sort of recategorizations were, were quite easy to obtain. Um, and we, we think these are quite nice visual outputs. And we were thinking, uh, as, as Greta mentioned earlier, and Robin was talking uh, about West Yorkshire Authority, how could we ascertain if these sort of uh, infrastructure pieces were compliant with government guidelines? So as Greta mentioned, the inclusive mobility uh, and the LTN cycling, uh, 120 cycling. Um, and Greta's just going to just do a quick talk on her uh, inclusive mobility function. Yes. So as it was mentioned, we thought, OK, how can we find out? Can we use OSM to figure out if a certain uh, 
sidewalk, for example, or uh, is compliant with the guidance. So and I started kind of working and developing this function, which would do it. Uh, but yeah, it proved to be super challenging uh, for a couple of reasons. One is, I guess maybe the most, the, the main reason is a bit of a lack of data on certain attributes that are really important. So for example, in Inclusive Mobility Guide, we have very specific definitions of what is, for example, a footway, which can be like a sidewalk adjacent to a road, and what is uh, a footpath. But it's not that easy to recategorize OSM data in a way that really accurately ref reflects that uh, difference. So for example, oh, can you move back? It's fine, thank you. So for example, we have this generic footway, uh, highway footway tag, but really figure out if it is adjacent to a road and it's a sidewalk, we would ideally have additional sidewalk tag, which very often is missing. So obviously there is a lot of uncertainty in our recategorization. And if you move and have a look at the plot, you can see that there are a lot of implied, implied footways because um, yeah, we, ca I, I, we cannot know with certainty that it is either a footway or a footpath. And obviously I think when we are thinking about planning, it's quite important to be aware of those limitations of, so, we, so our data is actually uh, not misleading, let's put it this way. Uh, yeah, and it's quite interesting that if you have a look at the curb, we have only, so in this map, sorry, it's lead city center, uh, and we have only one flush curb map. So that's how much data I guess we have. And yeah, it limits the potential of our SAM, uh, but hopefully it will be uh, addressed in the upcoming year, for example, when we have more interest from policymakers and they might maybe uh, encourage local communities to go out their map. So I'll just pass back to. Yeah, so uh, moving on for this, um... As mentioned, I, my main interest is trying to create um, a compliance with LTN 120 for cycling infrastructure within the UK. Uh, now, defined within the LTN 120 guide is, is this table, which is um, essentially appropriate seg segregation for cycle paths uh, combined with maximum speed limits for roads. Um, initially, I was hoping to be able to determine cycleway uh, or track segregation between fully curved, sort of like a step cycleway, light segregation, so say with like bollards or planters um, to cycle lanes or mixed traffic, and then be able to assess this against uh, speed limits using uh, the max speed tags. Um, however, much like with Greta's uh, issue with inclusive mobility and sort of lacking tag definition, uh, I've got a quick example, quick example here. We've got a fully curb separated cycle track sort of down in the city centre of Leeds. This cycle track is uh, described by two ways that have been joined together. First one, uh, highway equals cycleway not very informative at all. The second one, you know, we can see it's a buffered lane. There's the tags there to be able to assess the level of segregation accurately. Uh, but the main point I think I'm trying to make here is that these two ways both describe the same cycle track. And so the inconsistency of tagging really is kind of making it really hard to be able to accurately assess this level of segregation to be able to then say to the transport planners, you know, oh, we need to improve this here or improve that there. Um, so we're currently working on the LTN compliance function, but um, just given the current state of uh, tagging for, or at least advanced tagging uh, on the cycling infrastructure, we're instead just going to try and assess the level between, is there, is it mixed traffic cycling? Is it on, on carriageway cycle lane trafficking uh, cycling? Or is it just somewhat protected cycling? Um, these sort of segregations can be assessed by simply, you know, if there's no cycleway geometry, mixed traffic, uh, if there's a highway geometry with cycle lane specified, we know it's an on carriageway cycle lane, and any other sort of cycleway, cycle path, cycle trap uh, will have some sort of segregation. Um, but yeah, these are some of the issues that we've currently been facing um, within the project that are looking to develop and go into further. Um, but yeah, that, that concludes, our, uh, concludes our presentation, and uh, we just wanted to finish off saying uh, the open infrastructure, it's currently still in development. Um, we're looking for uh, sort of like participation, feedback on the data packs we're producing. We, we want these to be successful. We want these to be uptaken. Uh, it's an open source package, reproducible and extensible. Um, we have a link to our GitHub here, uh, where you can go on, uh, download the package, try it with some of your own data that you download, uh, go on to create an issue, let us know what you like, let us know what you think is a bit pointless. Um, we really want this to be useful and uh, successful. So the more feedback, the best.
yeah. Thank you very much. Great. Um, I was thinking maybe we can open this one so we can interact. Uh, there was, uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your great work. Uh, there was questions in the venue list, so maybe we can first go through them. Uh, the first one, curiosity, uh, there was a missing value in your reclassification of types of roads. What it is in OSM data? Uh, yep, yeah. uh, so within the recategorized road values, um, it can be a, a plethora of values. So you say highway equals service, highway equals track. Uh, the missing value doesn't necessarily mean, um, at least within that function, it doesn't mean that there's uh, a lack of a highway value, just that the highway value has not been able to translate to one of the um, seven uh, road classifications specified by the UK Highway Agency. Um, we actually before that plot was made, we removed any highway equals NA values. So there's, there's no waterway or like rivers or train tracks or anything like that. Um, so the missing values are just values that are not, not roads or usable by motor vehicles. Okay, thank you. Uh, there was a second question. Beyond tackling the uh, highway in general, which additional attributes are most useful for transport planning, like uh, max speed, lights, and are they already mapped in leads? Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, there are a, a number of additional tags that have been used in these functions. So um, as you say, uh, like uh, the foot, bicycle and access tags, um, these are all used to indicate, say, for example, the cyclable and walkable infrastructure appropriate. The, we've analyzed like um, foot tags, so the foot equals yes, permissive, no, a bicycle and access tags, et cetera. Um, and yes, lift tags, max speed tags. Um, uh, so we use all of these when trying to define these networks. Uh, within leads, um, some tags have better coverage than others. Uh, I think it's the same wherever you go, really. Um, but it's, it's, it's quite good. We, um, we are actually looking into trying to assess the quality or completeness of um, data within each local authority district. Excellent. Uh, I think there was another question. Can I just have a, make a follow-on comment? I think, I mean, part of the role of this project is to acknowledge that it's very early days for transport planning and OSM, certainly in the UK. And I think there's been a historical perception of, oh, we're not going to touch that with a barge pole because it's like Wikipedia in the early days, it's totally unreliable. Um, moving that conversation forward. So we're actually in the process of learning which tags are most useful. And a key part of it is being like having this continuous dialogue with transport planners. So we've got like a steering group who are giving us really good feedback. And I, I, my, what I've learned is it actually depends on what you're trying to achieve. Like, in the OSM community, there's been so many people who said, yeah, I want to build the best bike, bike map going. Uh, but actually, pedestrian infrastructure is often the, the most ignored. So the thing about the curbs, I think that's the lesson learned from me. I assumed OSM data was better than what it is, but we need more of those uh, mapping solutions to encourage you to map the curbs. So I think that, that's um, what I've learned during the, the course of the project. Excellent. Uh, I would like to pick uh, up some questions from the audience. Uh, the ladies here. Hey, um, that was great. Fantastic. Uh, thanks for sharing. I wanted to point out that there's some existing work in other areas that might be useful to you. Um, in the US, there's quite a bit of work that's been done on what we call level of traffic stress, which is just one to four. Is this safe and accessible for children or is it middle-aged men in Lycra? And so there's some there's been some work done around translating OSM tags um, to come up with that. You're nodding, so it sounds like you're familiar. Um, I just wanted to point that out that there's some libraries or even a community of like-minded people. Great, yeah, thanks a lot. And I think uh, one thing that I, I think a logical next step would be to augment OSM data. So um, we actually have a lot of road traffic um, information in the UK that's like continuously collected 
uh, specifically for the ro major road network. We don't have it for the local road network, but there's a PhD project starting in Leeds in September that's looking to model and estimate road traffic speeds and volumes on all major and minor roads across the UK. And if we could add that information to this, that would really improve our ability. Um, and I totally agree, we should probably add to this list like a function called estimate road traffic stress. So yeah, I think that's a really good idea and there's a lot to be learned on that. Uh, excellent presentation. Thank you very much indeed. It's become quite a theme of this state of the map. Uh, I think this is probably the fourth or fifth uh, active travel presentation that I've seen. I hope you're all talking to each other um, uh, rather than talking in separate rooms. Uh, but but I, I thought it was excellent. Uh, just my ignorance, you use the term wheeling and other active travel people use the term wheeling. Do you only mean wheelchairs or do you mean wheelchairs, prams, electric scooters, uh, anything other than a car? The, the latter. Yeah, yeah it's, it's everything. It's about being inclusive. Uh, so when we think about accessibility, uh, it's not just about wheelchair users. It's about uh, people with visual impairments. It might be uh, young mothers, young families pushing their uh, pushes, basically. And yeah, it's 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 very inclusive. And wheel is sort of, uh, wheeling is just generic term to capture that. Uh, but yeah, it's about being as inclusive and trying to capture it. Thank you. Uh, I see another question here. Yeah, uh, it's a more uh, like a common question. Sorry about it. But uh, two things. The first is if you have uh, seen the previous the, the talks in the previous days, of course. Uh, what you are doing is, is local because in other countries, for example, the way the tags are used may be different. So just word of caution. And another thing that I wanted to point out, uh, there was a, yesterday a tutorial, a tutorial by the Heidelberg group uh, about the awesome uh, dashboard. And if you want to look at the history of the coverage, I think I think that's the tool you you need to look into. So that's my comment. Thanks. Great. That's what we're doing. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, I've got to do a shout out to the Heidelberg people because dur during the, during their um, their their thing, I I managed to pull up this, which is like shows estimated length of cycleway in major regions of the UK, and it's amazing that this is possible. I've been wanting to get this kind of output going. So yeah, but we we want to have uh, conversations. I think there's a good question about um, with the Taking it forward, we want it to be future proof. So, should we have like a global uh, tool that does this and it doesn't have to be this project, or should we make this UK specific and then broaden it out? But if anyone wants to um, talk about this and, and try to create some joint infrastructure, yeah. we'll be happy to chat. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, some fellows from Hedbeck is in the room. Um, I'm also from Hedbeck somehow. So, uh, but there is another question from the venue list. Uh, I will read it. Uh, interesting project. Do you also think about integrate other key traffic factors like road works or land closures? What is your opinion on using OSM to map this dynamic or even temporal events? Would it be cool if one can see a land closure also from OSM? I mean, I think that that question, I would say, I don't know. So I, I'm, like I say, relatively new to the OSM community. And I think there are, you do definitely get to a point where you say this doesn't belong on OSM. So um, given that most countries and cities have their own like roadwork portals, I think trying to overload that on OSM um, could lead to some negatives if you're constantly um, having ephemeral phenomena being mapped but I'm, I'm not an expert in that. So I think that the key question really uh, that's broader is how do you link up OSM data in a two-way uh, dialogue with um, official data sets? That's hard and that's a bigger question. And hopefully state of the map next year, we'll, we'll see some progress on addressing that. Yeah, but yeah. that's not gonna be in this, in this project. Definitely, thank you.